Hey there, fellow scientist friends, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for the Scientist. So today we've got another basic lesson for you, in fact, basic lesson two. And we're going to be picking up essentially from basic lesson one, where I showed you how to set up your figure, or set up your document for creating a figure. And so in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to resize uh, some image data. In this case, we'll be looking at an immunofluorescence image. I've got my blue, green, and red channel here and I want to add in my merge channel um, and resize it to fit into this one by one inch, one inch by one inch grid. Uh, but like most of the videos, the te techniques that you see here can be applied to any situation. Uh, so let's get to it, I guess. So I just have my merged uh, image in a, f a folder here and I'm just gonna drag it into my document. <clears throat> and you can see right off the bat that uh, you've got this bounding box around the image of uh, with the little squares here on the edges and the corners and this works exactly like probably any other program that you're used to where you can just click and drag uh, these little edges or uh, these little squares and normally I will hold shift to constrain the width and height to keep the ratios the same so it stays as a square and you'll see that as I'm dragging uh, there's this little pop-up window that tells me my width, width and height information so you can see it's 2.2 here and I drag down and I want to try to get to one inch by one inch since that's what my uh, grid is set up for and I don't know if I actually can do that uh, I think that's about as close as I'm going to get so I'm going to let go and drag my image up into the grid here and so once you have the size and position that you like uh, you can either just hit enter on your keyboard or you can go up here and click this uh, check mark to commit the changes. Uh, just to note, you can click this little no sign if you're not happy with it, and that will set it back to what it was before. But I'm pretty happy with this, so we'll say okay. And there you have it. So that's method number one, which is definitely the easiest way uh, for resizing your image right off the bat. But say you're not happy with that, if you want to resize it to something else, um, what we can do, or if you're new to Photoshop, what you might be tempted to do is go up to image and you'll see this image size command here. But if you click this, this is going to resize your entire document and not the single panel that you're uh, wanting to change. Um, so we need to use something else. And to do that, first we want to make sure that the layer that we want to resize is active. So in this case, the cerebellum layer, which is the one we just placed. And now we go up to edit and we'll say free transform. So you can use transform and it, there's a bunch of options here so for instance we'll be using scale but you can look at all of these other ones too, rotate. Um, the beauty with free transform is that it lets you do all of those things so I find it's just easier to use this um, and then use whatever uh, transformation you need. Um, so I'll click free transform but you can also engage free transform by using the keyboard shortcut control T and you can see here that uh, again we have the bounding box just like we had before um, you'll notice I have the little curly arrows here if I'm on the corner and that's for rotating but for now we're just gonna scale the image so again I'm just gonna click and drag the corner box here again while holding shift to constrain the proportions and you'll see it's basically the exact same uh, technique or situation as last time um, so we'll leave it like this for now just for example Again, uh, you either click the check mark or hit enter, which I will do in this case. And so there you have it. That's method number two. Uh, for method number three, it's essentially the exact same. We're going to be using free transform again. So in this case, I will hit control T to engage free transform. But instead of clicking and dragging, we're going to um, enter in some numbers here. So that, that will give us a, a little bit more control. So the sort of boxes up here along the top, uh, first, these first two are indicating position information, so uh, your X and Y coordinates, uh, where your image is, uh, and then the next set of boxes here indicate uh, the height and, or sorry, the width and height. So you can you can see they're both in percent and in inches. Um, so you can enter in basically anything you like up here. You can put in inches or pixels or centimeters or percent, um, and that makes it really handy. So let's say we want to make our image one inch by one inch all we need to do is type in one inch and I forgot here um, normally what you want to do especially with a square image like this or actually pretty much in all cases is click this uh, little chain link button here which is maintain aspect ratio so this is essentially the same button as holding down the shift key and that's just going to set it so that your proportions are maintained 
And so here we have our one inch by one inch image. And now we can just drag this up. And again, we'll hit enter. And I like this way. I'm just going to hit control T again to show you um, because you can type in exactly the size that you want. So you remember when I was clicking and dragging, I couldn't get exactly the one inch. I was stuck with 1.003 or yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, this way I know that it's exactly one inch by, I mean, if you felt so compelled, you could type one inch in here as well, just to be sure. Um, and then I'll hint under. So that is method number three. And I guess actually I must have a bonus method here. So this is method number four. And I like this method because uh, it can be sort of a quick and dirty way to resize things um, even faster than free transform. So, and I think maybe most people, well, maybe some people do, but you might not know about this at first, but it's a handy thing to have. So you'll notice when I have my move tool selected, there's again some more op options along the top here. And <clears throat> uh, I'll just go through them. So auto select, uh, if you click, uh, is actually really handy because what this does is let you, um, when you click on a layer, uh, I'm just going to duplicate this layer to give you an example. Uh, so now I have two uh, cerebellum images here. So this box engaged, it's basically when you click on an, uh, an image, it's automatically going to select the layer um, that you're clicking to as you're moving around. So this makes it really essentially just like PowerPoint or any other program where you just click what you want. If it's not engaged, if I click, uh, it's going to stay stuck on whatever layer I have selected. And I remember when I was first learning Photoshop, I found this really frustrating because I would like click over here and try to move this one and then this guy would sort of disappear off the screen. And then when I discovered this auto select button, uh, it was really handy because it allows you just to work quickly without having to find the layer. Um, and so I should say, it's not just a layer, you can set it to group, uh, which we haven't covered yet, but if you group your images, sometimes you can move a bunch of layers together. Um, but we'll cover that later. Um, but what we're interested for now is this box that says show transform controls. And so if we click that, basically now what happens, anytime we click onto a different layer, it's just going to bring up this bounding box, uh, similar like we've seen the past couple of times. And same as always, we can just click and drag and resize or move just like that. And again, we can hit enter to lock in the changes. So it's just sort of one quicker little step. It saves you from having to push control T. But I find if you're working quickly or resizing a bunch of things, it's kind of handy to have uh, engaged. Um, so yeah, let's put this up here for my obsessiveness. Ah, one inch by one inch, beautiful, I love that. And let's get rid of this too. <clears throat> so uh, I think that's it for today. That's your three plus one bonus ways of resizing your image data to fit into your figure. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please again feel free to leave them and I will try to uh, answer them as best I can. And with that, uh, I guess we'll put a pin in that for today. And I will say again, you worked hard to get your data. So why not spend a little time working a little bit harder to make sure that it looks just great. Okay, that's it for today. I will see you all later.